old people still playing shoot them up. Yeah. And I'm not saying this to condemn any of them because somebody may be watching from that town. But folk are still playing with this thing called life. Yeah. They want to ride around with pistols and shoot people. 60 and 70 year old women still trying to turn tricks. You know why? Because they ain't taking salvation seriously. Because somebody lied to them and told them they ain't got to stand before God and have been purified. And a whole lot of preachers and Christians going to have to give an account for this. But Jesus said, abide. You can't do nothing without me. You need to abide in the vine. You ain't nothing more than branches. You just leaves on a, on a, on a tree. And when that leaf fall off, you got a tree in your yard somewhere in your apartment complex. When that leaf fall off, there ain't nothing you can do. I see them cutting the grass in these complexes. I ain't never seen them trying to put a leaf back on. Once it's off, it's off. They don't nobody care about it either. They come through. Every week or every two weeks, what they do, they rake it up, put it in a plastic bag, get it ready for the dumpster. Yep. And you better thank God that he cares enough through the spirit to warn you. Abide. Amen. Hang on. Suck all the sap you can out that vine because you're going to need him. You need him now. Yeah. You, Jesus said on in John, you can't do nothing without me. Yeah. You can't breathe without me. The respirator ain't what's saving you. Oxygen ain't what's saving you coming out of can. Your education ain't what's saving My mind told me your mind ain't big enough to tell you what to do. I'm not trying to be mean. You can't do nothing without Jesus. He made everything. We walk by faith. That's something you got to do every day. In this current situation, you got to stay focused. You got to spend focused time before him. You got to take time out in the day. Because if you've got an Achilles heel, the enemy coming after. If there's some, something weak about your whole portfolio, from your kids to your spouse to your financial management to hide your whole deal. It ain't just about you contained in the body. It's your whole situation. If there's an arrow that can be shot for you to get got, the enemy coming at you. You didn't watch the movie where the mafia say we can't get to him, get his kid. We can't get to him, get his wife. Can't get to her, get our husband. We can't get, we'll get to him some kind of way. Because the plan of the enemy is to break you and to get you off of God's plan and purpose and to get you over here. I told you the enemy and God is counting every sheep and everyone counts. Quit looking at the preacher. Oh, the preacher, the preacher. What about your soul? Amen. Every soul counts. Amen. And the devil ain't willing to let one go. Because one? Yeah. Let me tell you how it works in the kingdom. The kingdom says it this way. That one. If I get one person who's on fire. He can help. And create an environment to where a thousand demons have to flee. The way God counts, if I get one, one will not only affect one, that one will affect a thousand. And the way the enemy does it, if I get one, 
I can bring down a thousand. It ain't just, don't nobody see me, don't nobody know. If you are lukewarm, you're going to make a thousand people around you lukewarm. If your heart is, you're half-hearted, your wife going to be half-hearted. Your sons and daughters will be half-hearted. Your in-laws, your parents, all them people will be half-hearted. When they come around you, they know we can do whatever we want to do. They won't respect you. And it ain't about you, it's about God. But if you get on fire, folk will know there's a real God somewhere. But if you want to straddle the fence, they'll say, Straddling is good. Yeah. Double-minded is good. That's why he says all through the word, choose you this day. Who you going to serve? Yeah. So God says, get on the Lord's side. There's times in history where the man of God drew a line down the middle and said, everybody that's on the Lord's side, Come over here. And that's what the Spirit's doing. And everybody that's on Satan's side, stay over there. Because light and dark cannot mix together. You can't celebrate Rosh Hashanah, which is the blowing of the trumpets, and think you even know a little bit about it without realizing that the trumpet of God could blow right now and we could be taken out of here. I believe we might have some time still left. But I also believe we could be off too. Yes. Yes. Because Jesus says, be ye ready for the hour that you think not the Son of Man cometh. But you know what the problem is? Half the people in this room don't believe he'll come before you get your chicken out the oven today. And then the other problem is, how many of us have already planned our sin for this evening? You know why we do? Because we've hardened our heart. We got our sin on speed dial. Until you get discernment, you're going to always fail to measure up. God looking for some woman he can use. Yeah. Yeah. I said he's looking for some man he can use. Yeah. Somebody who ain't afraid to die. He got plenty of compromises. Somebody who can say no to me first. No to me. No to me. If you can't say no to me, don't preach to me. Yeah. And we don't have to know what you're saying no to, but if you haven't gone through your valley of saying no to you, you know what that no is? The sin that so easily beset you. Because we all got one that is a quickie. Y'all know what a quickie was. You got them ones that not hell had to freeze over kind of sin. But then you got that easily beset you one. That all it would take is a whisper from the enemy and you're off. He says, lay aside the sin that's so easily be said. That's the one that Satan whispers to you at the right time. Now, I can't tell you when the right time, and it ain't a Friday night, Saturday night kind of thing. So get your head out of that. It could be, hey. And that's the one where you have to quit, grip your stern wheel. 
turn the music up louder. It only lasts for a moment. That's the one that it just comes through. You know you heard it. You know you heard it. It could be anything. But, but what you know that if I do this, I may be there for a minute. You know that. You know if I open this up, I'm going to do it next weekend and the weekend after that. Yeah. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Yeah. You know it. It could be anything from gossiping to sex. But you know it. It could be a place that you drive by, or it could be as close as a telephone call away. It could be at a store. But it's a sin, and everybody living got one. It could be to call and talk about somebody. It could be a channel on TV that you ain't supposed to watch or you in your phone. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But God would be lying if you didn't have one. Mm -hmm. And the devil know you got it. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants you to play around it. He wants you to dance around it. And that's what we like to do. We like to dance around that sin. Then we want to come to church on Sunday. Dance around it. Could be your Facebook page. Dance around it. <laughs> then you want to run back over here. But you keep on. And you're going to get, you're going to get caught. And where your pride come in is you think I can get out when I want to. You ain't never walked into a spider web then. Discernment. You might get out, but not without scarring your reputation, your integrity. And your own conscience. Plus, the accuser of the brethren is going to always follow you around. The Spirit wants to teach us the difference between the profane and the holy. And you know what the purpose of that is? So he can release the greatness that's inside of you. Lift your hands and let's just praise him for a second. I'm about done. There's greatness inside of you. Why? Because the greater one is Jesus. And you can't lift your hands if you don't love him. I mean, you can't lift your hands to him if you don't love him. Why don't you just praise him for a moment? Because Jesus is who it's all about. And he don't want you to get beat up. He wants you to be lifted up. And the only part that might hurt about this message is that your flesh might hurt. Your spirit can't be hurt. Amen. Father, we just want to love you in Jesus' name, and we want you to help us, teach us the difference between the profane and the holy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come on. Can you say thank you? Do you know your spirit many times is treated like Cinderella before the ball? Thank you, before she was recognized and dressed? Come on. And it's time for you to recognize that she is glorious. And she's not a she, but God, she's glorious. But the, your, she's glorious beauty because it's God. Amen. 
But we adorn the flesh so much. And that's like all them old sisters, Drusilla, and all them sisters, you know, they just all haughty, and their mama, all haughty, and all, you can't be nothing. You ain't never going to be nothing, Cinderella. You just, you just, you too poor, homely. Don't nobody want nobody that's honest like you. They all in the mirror, they all, you know. And Cinderella, she was just looked over, but she was the one. Your spirit is the one. It's Christ in you. There ain't nothing in your flesh. I don't care what you think when you look in the mirror. And I'm not trying to make you feel bad about your flesh. If God has endowed you with good skin covered, good covering on the outside, I applaud you. We celebrate you. That you easy on the eyes. But if that's what your adorning is, you wasting your life because it, you know, you can see some befores. And then see somebody 30 years later, the jaws sink, you get a uh, turkey neck, the skin, Aretha was the queen of soul, and did you get the flabby under here? The Bible says bodily exercise profited little. <laughs> you still going to say Men, we going to get this here. Even if we work out, you know, we just, we have to work with this swell up here. Yeah. You know, you're going to get, you're going to, you know, if you don't work on the Christ in Hallelujah. you. If you don't work on, Amen. you don't work on the Christ in you. You can keep on, you know, if you can calculate how much money. I ain't, I ain't trying to go ghetto now. You can tell when the message over, Pastor, go, go, go ghetto. But you can, you can work on spending all your money at the beauty shop, ladies. You know. But if you don't work on the Christ in you. Brothers, we can put all our money in the, the rims and all that stuff. But we don't work on the Christ in us. You got to develop the Christ in you. Now listen. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. How do you walk in the Spirit? By knowing this, if you don't know this, it's hard to walk in the Spirit because it's something you have to do every single day. Every single day, like a father tells his son, boy, you got my last name. And the travesty is a boy growing up, and I'm not here to make anybody feel bad, but, you know, if he, maybe he don't know his, his father's name, you know, and, it's, and the kids in the playground, and he got to prove his name. Mm -hmm. But when my son's, boy, you a Connolly. Yeah. Now, he may not appreciate what that is, but just, you got to tell him, well, the Connollys, we don't, we don't run. Yeah. We fight. Yeah. You know, hello? Yeah. It may be basketball, man. I'm a Connolly, man. We, we score. Yeah. You know, that's how you talk them up. Yeah. And if you didn't learn it, you got to teach your sons that. Oh, I guess women do the same thing with their daughters. Girl, you like your mama. You got the girl. You go on in there and, and, and do it. See? But here's the scripture. The promises of God. Yea and amen. No matter what your situation is. If you've fallen, God's promises are yea to me. Will he forgive me? Yes. If I've come short of his glory, will God Lift me up, yes, and amen. If you don't know that, you can't walk in the Spirit. Listen, you got to know that. The promises of God are yea and amen. amen. This, this does not mean if I ask God something, he's going to say, yes, you can have it, amen, get it. No, it means the promises of God. Can I do all things through Christ that strengthens me? Amen. Yes, and amen. Yeah, yeah. Does God love me in spite of my failures? Yes, yeah. and amen. When, when, I, when I've acted bad, will God cleanse me? Yes and amen. Is the Lord on my side? Yes and amen. You got to know that. If you don't know that, the Satan will steal your identity. Man, people calling me all the time. The bank called me several times. Mr. Carly, somebody got you. Did you do so and so and so? -and -so? No, I didn't do that. Identity theft is the greatest thing that's going on. And the enemy, Satan, is trying to steal your identity. When you, when you fail, 
That's why you, you don't need nobody to tell you who you are. Amen. Amen. You're beautiful because Christ made you beautiful. But your beauty is not brothers and sisters, not your flesh. Look in the mirror. You know you, you challenged. I mean, yeah, it feel good when somebody tell you looking good. Amen. <laughs> but if I didn't have these clothes on, I wouldn't look like that. <laughs> the beauty is Christ. Amen. Amen. It's not my personality, which has to do with the, the physical person. It's my spirituality. Amen. Come on. We got to give Christ the glory. We got to say, hide me, Jesus, because if you knew me on, a, on any given day, man, be honest with people. That's why people trip when they see some of y'all get angry. I thought you were saved. I am saved. But I'm, I'm living this world. I got mad today. Now, would you forgive me? No, I ain't going to forgive you. I can't forgive you. I think you get mad. I can't forgive you. <laughs> What kind of hypocr hypocrisy is that? You got so mad, I thought you was going to, man, I ain't, my God, how can you, okay, I got mad. The beauty in you is not your physical. This flesh has to take a bath, it has to be washed, it has to be perfumed, it has to be oiled up, it has to be lotioned. It gets ashy. The beauty in you is not your hair. Amen. The beauty in you is not your skin. Thank Amen. God if he gave you that. But the beauty in you is Christ. Amen. It's not the latest sweater. It's not the GQ fashions. It's not, it's not that jacket. It's not those shoes. It ain't. It ain't how you walk. It ain't. Because so, if so, us old people, we would cease to be beautiful maybe. You got to know that I'm beautiful because Jesus is in me. Amen. 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 And so I'm going to walk in the spirit. Stand with me. Amen. And when I'm struggling to walk in the spirit, I'm going to grab hold to a scripture. I'm going to get back over here. Listen, I ain't going to let nobody... Listen, daughters, I ain't going to let nobody keep me from building a land bridge over here. Yeah. Nobody. Amen. God forbid anybody should come between me and God. Amen. Do you hear me? Yeah. I know I'm being silly, but we do this. Let people and stuff. Now we can't get to God. And the devil try to remind us, oh, you can't get to God because of this. I'm not letting nobody, yeah. not my job, yeah. not no woman, yeah. not no man, yeah. not my baby daddy. Yeah. On September 11th, 2001, we might have had two or three the course kids, but that of American history was suddenly changed. You ain't going to knock me up till Jesus comes, the chaos Negro. and the confusion, the destruction, and the heartbreak, the shock of 3,000 lives nine lost kids, in a single day. You ain't trying to make an honest woman out of me. But we also remember with you the great resolve of everyday people, the acts of heroism that brought Our us job. together. All my homies in the street. The men and women who stood in the gap. Well, somebody reminded me who I am. I ain't got no daddy. My daddy wasn't there. To help others. Penitentiary. Decades have passed since that historic day. I got a day. record. And in I that time, we have learned that despite all the suffering ain't and loss, nothing gonna keep me from getting our God I walk remains across all, all y'all to get over here. Even when smoke what I and know debris now. obscure our paths. His unfailing well, here's love where life will is. carry us through. Leave As we a whole remember bunch of those people. who were lost, let us honor their me? memory with our lives. And until you're willing to Giving do that, God can't use you. To help the hurting, 
Making Lord. sacrifices for those where the, around where us the commandments of the Lord, and sharing the faith is a yes which and brings amen. eternal Ain't hope over here, and peace. But we might help you. Yeah, no, I can't help you. I can't, I can't help this you. This is our promise I'm sorry, and I'm our sorry. prayer no, if you should, would, could, for 9-11. Yeah, yeah, oh, let Yang. No, I'm coming over here where there's a, there's a sure word. There's a sure word. Come on, lift your hand. Some of y'all ran with Jesse James and the outlaws. And then them, them, they ain't nowhere around when your rent was due. Wasn't nowhere around. When you got sick, was in the hospital, they didn't even come to see you, send you a card or nothing else. Come on. When your heart was lonely and you was broken, where was they? Come on, lift your hands and praise God. You come on. You need to thank God. You go to prison. Yo, they won't even come bring you a sack of lunch. Won't put nothing on your books. I'm trying to tell you, you better come on. All them people crawling in your bed, amen, when you need them, they won't be there. You better come on with it. Who am I talking to? They get you addicted, but when you're trying to get free, they won't get you to a treatment center. You better learn how to walk in the spirit because you're going to get sick and tired of it one day depending on somebody. Tell you what they're going to do for you, how they're going to be there for you, but when you need them, they won't be there for you. But I serve a God that says I will never leave you or forsake you. And I'm a witness. He ain't never left me or forsaken me. I forsook myself and he didn't leave me. Hello, I said I forsook myself. 